going? Oh, I just do that. <laughs> Ready for action? <laughs> <laughs> This is Pete Koch. I'm breaking it down with uh, really truck and Hollywood legend uh, George Sacken. He's, he's kindly given me some time this morning. We're on his property here in Agua Dolce, California. The, uh, the largest collection of uh, production vehicles, 18-wheeler semis. Yep. In in the world, probably in the world, yeah. And so, how long? And, and you drive them all, and you 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 wrench them all. You're yep, all of it, all of it, exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna show this property a little bit as we go along here. But can you tell me, George, when did um, your passion for trucks begin? It really, well, it was an interesting situation. I was driving a little Ford Bobtail with 12 tons of asphalt on, and I saw a red and white Peterbilt going up Roscoe Boulevard, and it just clicked on me. The guy had a big cigar in his mouth, and I thought, that's what I want to do. I want to go up Roscoe with a Peterbilt with a big cigar in my mouth. So I worked in a gas station every night to pay for the fuel I burned with my bobtail. And at the end of the year, I had enough money to buy a 1963 Peterbilt transfer rate. So I got the cigar in my mouth. I went up Roscoe Boulevard. The cigar fell out of my mouth, caught my pants on fire, <laughs> burned the heck out of me. So I decided the cigar had to go, but the Peterbilt, I loved it. I you had... And did you, and from there, I mean, it, was this the beginning of your own business? Yes, it was. It was. Cal T80919, 1964. I started hauling asphalt out of the San Fernando Valley, and I was the first guy to use a truck and trailer to haul asphalt with. And wonder why everybody didn't like me, because everybody that had a 10-wheeler had to get a transfer, because I set a precedence for it. In fact, they even come out with an hourly rate for us, $13.10 an hour, which we thought was great, because we could make $100 a day, and that was incredible. And this is when the San Fernando Valley was, I guess, going through a real building boom? Yes, it was. It was going through a big building boom. And they yes, needed the asphalt for the roads? For the and roads and parking lots and everything else. And from one truck, it was then it was one truck, you went to two trucks? and Yeah, then I got, and then I ended up with five truck and trailers when I was uh, 21 years old. I had five wow. truck and trailers with all young guys driving them. The older guys didn't like me because I made them get truck and trailers by this president that I set because they preferred the 10 wheelers over the truck and trailers. Incredible. So at one po at some point, so I didn't I didn't realize I knew that you were this this incredible uh, Hollywood stunt driver, but I but you you really started out um, as just just a, a working man driver, just somebody that was very interested in a very. And I guess you were all that time though. You were developing your skills, yeah, as a driver. But w but where was where was the 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 jump over to the Hollywood? I'll side? tell you where the jump was at. I went. I used to go all over the country because they become a truck dealer, and I sold out my. Uh, bulk cement hauling business to consolidate rock products, and I was over in Colorado, and I was going through uh, Loveland Pass, and it was snowing outside, and I never forget there was a car full of nuns in front of me, and I was coming down the hill with a truck decked on the back. That's where you take the front axle and put it on the fifth wheel of the truck, and I'm going down the pass, and I noticed I didn't have any brakes, and I kept on speeding up, and I had the tack on almost up to 2,500 RPM. There was a big berm on the right-hand side of the road with a bunch of mailboxes, so I decided maybe that would slow me down so I didn't run over the nuns in front of me. And I almost hit them, and I pull over on the berm, and the mailboxes were flying over the truck, and I finally decided the only thing I could do was drive off the road. So I just cut it to the right, the truck in back of me started swinging back and forth. I went over the side of the mountainside. I'm flying down the mountainside. It was on, I don't know what the degrees was, but there was bushes and trees flying all my way. And all of a sudden, I felt maybe I'd get back on the road again. I don't know what come over me, so I put my foot all the way to the floor. The buddy seat was, the cushions were flying around the inside of the cab. <laughs> I put the pedal to the metal, and I got traction. I come back up the road, and now I'm in front of the nuns, and they have all these black beads they're playing with. <laughs> 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 and I'm in front of them now. And so about half an hour, 45 minutes, we got down the steamboat, and finally my brakes thawed out. Whew. And uh, what was so funny about it was I had the tires off the front of the truck. I had decked in the back, and they were in the back of the dump box because it was a dump truck that I was hauling. And the tires passed me up because when I went over this, when I come back on the road, I did it with such a hump, the tires flew out of the back, and uh -huh. I saw both my tires going with me down the road. But I don't know who got those, but that was the end of those. But that gave me an idea of doing jackknives in the movies because the way they used to do it is they'd have a truck and trailer going down the road with a cable connected to the trailer, and a big four-ton truck would pull the trailer around. Oh, I see. So someone heard that I had some mechanical thing that I didn't have. I don't know how it happened. So they called me out in 
the, the, one of the freeways before it was opened up, and he said, what we want you to do, George, is jackknife a truck and trailer. I said, oh, okay. He says, we hear you have a system. I says, oh, oh okay, I have a system. <laughs> so I come home here, and, and I started putting something together so that I could control it from the cab of the truck without using the pickup truck to pull it around. And I come up with this system, all hydraulic system. I went out on the movie set and showed them, and they all went crazy. They thought it was the craziest thing, the best thing they'd ever seen, because I could set back up from to point one in five minutes. So can, can do you recall what was the first film you jackknifed the truck? That was The Doors. The movie was called The Doors. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know what year that was? Oh, I'm gonna look for that. All right. The doors. What do you think it was? Zero, bottom of this. 79 or 80 or something like that. See if you can look it up and see okay. what it says. You know. So that was. Now I. So we, <laughs> I guess word got out that you you. Oh, it did. I started getting telephone need. calls from all over the country. Everybody wanted me to come do it was the, fast, huh? the jack nights for him, and and every time I come out, everybody would be really amazed. And the stunt coordinator says, George, you got to make this look a lot harder than what you do because. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, but you're not, you're just a you're a businessman. Yeah. And and uh, you had this incredible experience where you you were able to control a your truck jackknife, but you you figured out you could control it. That's right. And totally. then you uh, you're uh, yeah, I suppose you have a background in engineering where you're able to to uh, fabricate. Uh, tools and things to yeah. to make the truck do what you want. Well, what I'd do before I would do it, I'd go out with a car and see exactly what they wanted me to do. Like one scene we had for uh, Canon Films where I cut the roof off of four police cars. I jackknifed the trailer and four police cars would come at me and I cut the roof off all four of them as I jackknifed over the top of them. And that was pretty interesting. We did that down in Los Angeles. <laughs> so, so, and so, and I can ima only imagine that each time you you pull off one of these stunts, uh, and everybody is blown away by it. But then the next uh, director that you work with or producer, they want a little more. They want to push the ball. Well, they become more. what they do is they become very, very creative. Is what they do. Mm -hmm. Just like when I jackknifed over Tom Cruise himself. We started out, and he just wanted to see how close my points were, and Arrow was behind me with another truck and trailer. This uh, was uh, Mission Impossible 3? Yes. Okay. We, were, we had a... What bridge was that, Arrow? Do you remember Saint the bridge? St. Vincent Bridge. St. Vincent Bridge? Yeah. Vincent Bridge. In yeah. downtown yeah. Los Angeles? Well, well they, you, they made it... Um, in a different state back in New Jersey, some bridge from another. Oh, I see. They put green screen and made water look everywhere. Yeah, the water was all yeah digital. And uh, so what he did was he stood there with Tom Krug, the stunt coordinator, and he says, George, I want you to come flying in here about 40 miles an hour, and I want you to swing the whole rig over, and I want you to stop five inches from this edge of the bridge and 10 inches from this edge of the bridge, <laughs> come swing in sideways. So he's sitting there with Cruz, and I come flying in, and Cruz is trying to get out of the way, and he's holding on to him like this. And I swung the whole rig around, and I was right on the money, and then Cruz goes like this, and I go like this, and so we were ready to do it down on uh, Mission Street. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So Okay, and, and these uh, these stunts where you um, swing the the, the the trailer the trail around, and you've done this, and it goes over a person. Yeah, that's lying on the ground. Yeah, exactly. It, what was the sh show I did with uh, the one guy where he was in the police car and I jackknifed over the guy in the motorcycle? Desperate well, measures. What? Desperate measures. Is that it? Andy Garcia. Andy Garcia. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Japanese were there and they gave him ten Honda 400s. And what the deal was is the guy's coming up the road on the bike and he lays the bike down and I jackknife over the top of him and when he pulls away from the bike, the bike goes running into my tandems and blows the bike up in a million pieces. So after the fourth one, the Japanese say, well, we don't like what you're doing to our bikes. You get no more. So they, <laughs> so they had to take the five wreck ones and make one for the last shot. But I gave a lot of credit to the stunt guy that did the gag because he laid down right in front of me and I went right over the top of him. Incredible. Yeah. So I, it, the trust that these people have in oh, you. Oh yeah, I know that's right. Well, I, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. But I quit acting real silly because then it didn't take me seriously. Yeah. I thought I was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> but I put a lot of I, I put a lot of time into it, and I, and I always I even checked well the degree of hardness on the asphalt or the cement or whatever we're working on to know what the slide factor is because I don't put any additives in the road to make the thing slide. I'm under control all the time. I mean, I, I suppose we can get into the details. I'm interested in that, but there's, there's, a, there's a whole lot of uh, variables that you want to control. Yeah. Uh, and and you, you're saying it, the, the, the air temperature that day. Oh, yeah, everything. The amount of humidity in the air and everything is all very important. 
And then you make the adjustments to your rig. Uh, That's correct. I make adjustments to it for air pressures, how fast I want it to react, and uh, how much turning I do to the truck. To uh, when you take a truck and turn it three inches to the right, the trailer goes six inches to to the left as you're jackknifing. Oh. So all this has to go in because it it's a. Uh, amplified from what you do in the front is amplified the back that's why they have a hand valve in the truck in the old days when guys would jackknife trucks not on purpose of course that pull the hand valve and then they'd give it fuel well that's the opposite of what a person wants to do all they want to do is just jam the brakes on because that's the first thing that comes to mind but to get out of that situation you pull the hand valve which puts the trailer brakes on and you punch the truck and that straightens the rig out Got it. And, but they put quitting hand valves on trucks so there's no way of straightening out a jackknife oh. if you're a guy driving a truck which well, is how crazy. do you do it? What? How do you do it? How do you straighten it out? Oh, I, I, uh, I just, I just steer it back because oh, I have full control steering and with a toggle switch. Got it. Because of your, the, 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 the device the that I perfected in the back to make it, it go wherever I want it to go. Then there's nobody else in Hollywood, nobody else in the world that does this. They try to do it. I say try. I'm not running anybody special effects people or anything like that because I'm in competition with the special effects people to a certain degree because I've engineered this whole thing and work it all out. And my son can do the same thing I, I do. And uh, they have their ideas on what to do, but they can't copy what I do. They have to make something different, which right. is just about impossible because I started out with the best thing you can have and you got to go from there. Yeah, and that's why... He's the Jackknife King. Yeah. I love that name. <laughs> the I love the logo, the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, one other thing, I want, I want to get to this too. Uh, 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 we're talking about your driving, mm -hmm. but but you're a fabricator, right? So all of yeah. these trucks, you and uh, some of the, I know you've built trucks for uh, Dual going on, right? Was oh, that, yeah, yeah. Was that a, the Dual, Dual truck yeah. going back? Yeah. All the way the 1955 Peterbilt, yeah. And that was the, the starring Dennis Weaver uh, in one of the first films that's that. Right. Uh, 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 Steven Spielberg that was the directed. first one that Spielberg did in it, 1971. He did the whole movie that, up here. That that it, that's the most famous. I mean, this sounds silly, but that's the most famous. It's semi a cult film it's in one the, of the world. Most famous it's, a, world. A, it's a famous film. You never it's see a the guy's face. And the the star is uh, probably the truck, and then the co-star is Dennis Weaver. Dennis, I think. that's absolutely correct. The truck was the star, and you built it. Yeah. There was, there was thrift. There were, I built the third one. Somebody, special effects people, built the first one, and then I built the third one. They were going to make it into a regular movie because they had to add 15 minutes to it. So. But there's people that are so up on this thing. In fact, when I sold the rig, the one we rig, this guy knew everything about everything. In fact, he said once in a while you could see Spielberg in the back seat when you looked at the rearview mirror when Weaver was driving the car. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Oh, holding a we're running a camera? Yeah. Oh, my In God. fact, I had a guy come to me one day and he said, I hear you have the dual truck. I said, that's right. He says, I just got finished doing James Dean for over two years. His wife goes, yeah, for two years. We were up there watching the road and everything else, and he's working on this now. He says, where's the truck? I said, right now it's down in Magnolia Boulevard off of Hollywood Way. Would you like to see it? He said, I'd love to see it. I says, okay, meet me down there tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, and I'll take you over to show you the truck. So he jumps in the car with me. We turn right on Magnolia, turn left on the side street, and there's a the truck in the guy's driveway. He looks over at the truck and goes, ah, get me out of here right now. Get me out of here right now, right now. I'm going, okay, no problem. So I get him out of there, take him back to his car. His wife calls me up two days later and says, Charles committed suicide. I said, what? Uh, he said the truck scared him to death, and he thought the truck was possessed, and he took his life. Oh, no. Can you believe that? Wow. That's unbelievable. It's incredible. Well... How do folks uh, get a hold of George Sachs? Should they need uh, the best truck driver in the world or have something built for them or fabricated or modified? Yeah, we could do all that. We, what do we have it on, Errol? Phone numbers. Phone numbers? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, phone number 661 251 4200. That's jackknifeking.net, too, if you want to take a look at that. Jackknifeking.net. Okay, and I'll put that information in the show notes. That's incredible. Thank yeah. you, George. For and I have 12 rigs already pre-built to do whatever you want to do. They're already made up. They look incredible. I've seen them. <laughs> and I'll <laughs> we'll include that, too. So uh, thank you, George, for your time. I appreciate it. Fascinating. You're welcome. Pete Koch breaking it down.